I'm Grant Crilly. This is Jonathan Zaragoza. We're going to show you how to make amazing pollo carbon the precise way on the grill. So three things that make a perfect pollo al carbon. Okay. One, really juicy chicken, obviously. Mm -hmm. Two, you need carbon, you need charcoal, smoky flavor. And three, to set it over the edge is that beautiful brick red marinade, and that's it. Mm. Perfect pollo al carbon. It looks so good. Juicy on the inside, crispy, crispy char on the, the outside. outside. Oh, delicious. Let's get into it. So this recipe is inspired by a place I eat at in uh, Tijuana. Real simple place, they sell tortillas on one side and do pollos al carbón on the other side. And it's awesome because when you go in there, they have some pollo al carbón kind of just sitting off the side of the grill, kind of getting some smoke and cooking gently. And then when you order it, they finish it on a hot grill. Pollo al carbón is literally just chicken over coals, but we went a step further and marinated it in a adobo rojo or just a marinade and that's it. We're always talking about separating all the different animal parts because they all cook at different rate. Mm -hmm. Whole chicken is like one of the only animals I feel like I actually generally like it better whole, but it's hard to nail just right. And with the two zone grilling, you can do the thing, just like you said, where it's precision, slow cooked on an imprecise grill. And then you can char it till it looks good so it comes out just right each time. For sure. And the spatchcock helps out a lot for that even cooking as well. Don't forget the spatchcock. Do not forget it. So we're gonna make our marinade for the pollo al carbón. Couple of ingredients you guys can find in most grocery stores. Neutral oil, guajillo chilies, onion, garlic, some aromats like oregano, cinnamon, clove, peppercorn, um, also the pineapple juice, orange juice and lime juice, a little bit of apple cider vinegar for some brightness, and then the last thing we're gonna do for color and beautiful flavor is the achote paste. We are cooking outdoors, so I have my grill lit behind me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up our pan, put the oil in, and then start caramelizing our onion and garlic. So our onions and garlic are in the oil behind me here, caramelizing, they're at the point where I'd like to add my chiles in there and get them toasted and fragrant. What you're looking for is the garlic to be tender. I'm gonna smash it with the side of my spoon. You can see how tender that is already. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna add my guajillo chiles that have been seeded and stemmed and just get them toasted. When you're toasting chiles, what you're looking for is for these, to, these guajillos to turn a tobacco color. They've been in the pan now for maybe 30 seconds. We wanna take it no longer than a minute just to make sure that they're not burning because you'll get a really kind of bitter taste out of them. So it's been about a minute here. I'm gonna add the spices to this and these are just gonna to toast for about a minute or until they're fragrant. So at this point, I'm gonna add my water into the pan, just being careful not to kind of splash or go over the sides because it will flare up. And then we're gonna add the achiote as well. So you're just looking for this to hydrate and also just get tender like your peppers here. So at this point, I'm gonna close the lid and let it simmer until it's tender about 10, 15 minutes. So you can see like our peppers are pretty tender now, change in color. You can see like that little white ring that's going around the edges there. So I pulled off the marinade from cooking. The peppers are not quite as tender as I'd like to see them, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this steep for 20 minutes and at that point they'll get a chance to hydrate perfectly. And then we'll marry that with apple cider vinegar, pineapple, lime, and orange juice, and our marinade will be done. And we're just gonna blend it until pureed smooth. You can still see it's a little warm. You're gonna to wanna to let this cool at room temperature until it's cool enough to manage or put on your chicken. You don't wanna cook your chicken, you wanna just marinate it. So you can also ice this down, no problem, but we're just gonna let it cool at room temp. So we're gonna spatchcock the chicken for the pollo al carbón. A lot of ways to do it. We're gonna flip the bird here and I'm gonna take my shears and run them alongside of the backbone on both sides. You know, right by this thigh joint and then up here by the wing joint and then remove it there. Um, what I like doing is I like kind of popping this joint here right at the, the oyster here to kind of free that up and get your bird a little flatter, easier to work with. And then we could start making the incisions for these spatchcocks. So we're gonna just take our shears here all the way up, getting to that wing joint up there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here, all the way up. And then you can save this little part. You can roast it for stock or do whatever you want with it. Give it to your dog if you're nice. We have our chicken that's like exposed on the inside. You can take your hand and just kind of smash it down a little bit. And then we're just gonna remove these. So here I like taking my knife and just making a little incision and getting all the way almost to the breastplate here. And then you can kind of pull it back and then remove those ribs gently. You don't really wanna pierce the breast on this side. Same thing on this other side here. 
and take your knife and run it alongside those ribs on the inside. You can also use your shears to get in there. Kind of just remove this little part. So the reason I like spatchcocking the bird for pollo al carbón is just to make sure everything is kind of cooked evenly. Having a single layer of chicken is just easier to manage on the grill and you end up with a really, really delicious chicken. Transfer this to a sheet tray lined and then we're just gonna season it with salt and pepper. So we have our bird spatchcocked here, marinade made. We're just gonna pour some of this here on top of our chicken and you guys can use a brush. I'm gonna use my hands, both sides. And we're gonna marinate it for about six hours or until you run out of patience, really. If you wanna do overnight, even better, no problem. Okay, so the chicken is marinated. We're going to grill it on our two zone grill setup. On the water side first, you're gonna see a little pan with water. And what that's gonna kind of recreate is basically an oven. That's gonna cook our chicken and then gonna transfer it to the hot side of the grill to finish it and get a beautiful char on it. So our chicken's almost to the temperature that we want it. We ha still have it on the cool side of the grill. We have our knob onions here that traditionally get served with this, like we call them cebollitas. A lot of ways to cook these, you can take them if they're small and confit them in a little bit of oil and then grill them. But because these are bigger, I'm just gonna work them on the grill, cut them in half and get them kind of charred up. I laid them this way because I'm protecting the greens. They're super tender and I don't really, really wanna get char on them just yet because this side is gonna cook a lot quicker than this little tender green side. So again, just kind of playing with the heat, seeing where it's at. If it's too hot, you can pull them closer this way. If it's, you know, cooler, you know, you just kind of play around with the food a little bit. Once this is tender, I'll flip them and then get it cooked all the way through and then I can start sliding these more to finish them and char. I'm gonna temp my chicken right now just to make sure it's around like 165 here registering dark meat. So my legs are temping out right where I want them. The breast still needs a little bit more time, so what I'm gonna do is kind of rotate this so that the breast ends up towards the hotter side of the grill just so that it gets cooking longer and then these can kind of cool down on the other side. So I'm gonna flip these over. You can see that they're beautifully charred right where we want them. Flip them on this side to finish the cooking, get them super tender, and then at that point I'll coat them in maybe a little bit of olive oil, season them, and serve them alongside my chicken. I'm gonna pull my onions off here. They're beautifully charred and delicious. And then I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of olive oil and season them right before serving. So I'm gonna make sure I just prepare my grill grates with a little bit of oil here. Where my chicken's gonna land. And I'm just gonna flip my chicken onto the hot part of the grill. All right, so our chicken just got pulled off the grill. Essentially, we smoked it on the cold side of the grill, so the skin kind of pulled tight. And then at that point, we grilled it just to finish it, get some nice, beautiful charring. You can see like the marinade stuck to it really nicely. I enjoy these like little burny bits here, just because that's like very, very reminiscent of the way they serve it in Mexico. It's like really fantastic. It's juicy still, like you can see, it still has really nice bounce. We're gonna rest it for a little bit and then we'll carve it. Chicken's off the grill. Got a couple of things on the table. Charred knob onion, cilantro, some rice, beans, salsa cruda, and tortillas. Let's get into it. Do you usually make, make a tortilla out of it? Or yeah, you just like eat taco. them on the side or something? It's however like you want it. How, there's no wrong way to do it, man. Mm. If you want tortilla. Can I get some want, Wonder Bread? Or? You can, dude, that'd be <laughs> sick. A little bit of hot sauce. If you were actually just gonna serve this at home and you're like, okay, I'm gonna hang out with my friends and serve this, would right. you take all the meat off? And yeah, like you chop can, it up together, you can or for sure. Do like, oh, you get a leg, or you get yeah. A so or? at shops, what they'll do is they'll kind of cut it into these like pieces mm -hmm. here, and then they'll serve it to you like this. And then what you'll do is kind of take your tortilla and kind of pick pieces off of it. Mm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a taco out of it, like this. I'm gonna cut a little bit of the onion up here and just throw everything on there. Oh dang! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dirty bird, come on. Dirty bird. Dirty bird. And beans. Come on, man. This is the tiniest burrito I've ever seen. This is the smallest burrito we'll ever make. <laughs> Dude, I love get that. into that. Holy smokes, that looks so good. Dude, you like know how to cook. How is it? Mm. It's a good bite, right? Oh my God. Dude, the, the reason I like cooking a chicken like this because it offers a couple things. It's super juicy. It's got character because it's smoky it's and good. adobo rojo marinade. I love it. Oh yeah. Oh my God. We've been cooking our butts off with Jonathan. We've got this full recipe at chefsets.com plus a ton of others like how to make a whole cochinita pibil on your own, either in the home oven or an epic one. All at Chef's Steps. Check it out. See you soon. Good Cheers. job. Cheers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, what's better than this, dude? Like, Boy Al Carbon is my favorite. Subscribe to our channel and visit ChefSteps.com for more tips, recipes, guides, and tools to help you level up in the kitchen.